So today I've got the battle of the smart trainer fans. I've got the Wahoo Headwind fan that's been around for about a half a decade. And I've got the much newer Elite Area fan, which has been around for, well, roughly a year since it was announced. And of course, it started shipping more recently than that. Now, both of these fans are expensive because they're designed for indoor smart training scenarios where both of these fans can be triggered by things like your power meter, your trainer, your heart rate sensor, and all sorts of other goodness. So the point of this video is to find out which one of these fans delivers a better blow job. Uh, apparently I can't say that, so blow, blow performance. But first off, since a lot of you will be asking, what the heck is the difference between these two fans and a whole lot cheaper models behind me? After all, this is a roughly $10 fan that I use a lot, both training and otherwise, and it's pretty decent, right? And then you've got this Lasco fan here that's like 60 or so bucks, as well as this Backmaster fan here in the same general ballpark. And in fact, Backmaster now comes with a new remote option as well for indoor training. Well, the key difference between these two fans and all the other fans out there today is that these ones can connect to smart trainers, heart rate sensors, speed sensors, and depending on the model, other sensors as well. So that's why I'm focusing on these two as opposed to all the other very perfectly functional fans for a fraction of the price. But since you've asked or didn't ask, I'm here to tell you. Now, first up is the price. This one here, the Wahoo Headwind, retails for $299 US dollars, and the Elite Area retails for $349 US dollars. From there, we need to look at the physical specs. I'm just gonna go like side by side through this. This should not be a long video. This is not a very complex topic. Uh, first off, the Elite Fan has 10 adjustable positions. Boom, you hear each one of those clicks. Boom, 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 boom. 10 positions, so you can adjust up and down. This has no adjustable position. You just put it on the floor and have to move it forward and back so the wind hits you where you want. Now, to be clear, there is adjustability on the Wahoo fan, but not in the way you think or want. Um, so there's these legs that pop out like this, but all that does is point the air further down. Uh, the main reason you do this is to clear a trainer desk underneath the space like that, uh, but isn't really helping in most scenarios unless you have this on a table or something like that. Next, one of these big marketing things on the Elite Area Fan is that there are two carbon activated filters on both sides, which they say should reduce the quote odors in the room as well as remove harmful things. Uh, look, I don't have any way to like scientifically validate that. Uh, like if I fart in the room, it's still gonna stink in the room. So I'm not really sure how that works. I would suspect, however, that most of us do often train though in dustier environments and having a fan that's basically taking the air directly from the floor of your garage and stuffing it in your face at 50 kilometers an hour. I could see some benefit in having a filter system there. Uh, what is nice though about Elite's filter system is they're actually pretty reasonable. They say the filters will last about 500 hours and a little red light on the top will tell you when it's done with the 500 hours, but the fan will otherwise work just fine. And the two pack for the two filters, because there's one on either side, is 15 bucks, which again, seems pretty reasonable since like the filter I bought for this stupid little air freshener thing in my house is like 40 bucks. So. I think this is a, a much better deal. Next, both fans have control modes on the front of it. Uh, you can see this button right here, turn it on, increase or decrease your uh, power of wind. And then on the Elite fan, it is the same thing here. There is a big power button right there. I know it's upside down to you, it's also upside down to me. Uh, and then increase or decrease your speeds, as well as the option here for sensors and which sensor control mode that we'll get into in just a second. Now, both of these fans have ways to pick them up. In the case of the Elite fan, you've got this swanky little leather handle right there. That's kind of nice. Uh, in the case of the Wahoo fan, the whole thing, you just lift it up by the top. There's like a grip thing there. In terms of power cords, the Elite fan has a detachable power cord. You can just pull it off from right there, but doesn't otherwise have a place to store the power cord. Versus the Wahoo one has this handy dandy little loopable thing there, uh, which is nice, but there is no way to detach the power cord. It's like permanently on there forever. So something to keep in mind, ideally we'd split the difference between the two and be perfect. Now, both of these fans have a relatively similar column of air, and that's probably the bigger difference between some of these fans and like generic fans, is that these fans are designed to have this really kind of relatively thin column of air that hits your torso straight on, your head, everything like that, relatively focused. Now, both of these fans claim a top wind speed of approximately 48 kilometers an hour, uh, 50 in some scenarios, but 48 kilometers an hour is their top claim speed. Obviously, I can actually test that. Uh, I've got a wind measuring device that I use for doing wind tests. Uh, I cannot say if this device is like certified to something else, but for what it's worth, both devices, if I put the thing right on the front of it, you can see right there, uh, is measured at roughly 45 kilometers an hour. Notably, actually, the highest fan speed is at the very top of both of these. If you go down even like an inch, uh, it goes down quite a bit to like 40 kilometers an hour. It's actually really fascinating to move it around there, and that's directly on the front grates. 
The moment you go even like a foot away or like 30 centimeters away from these, that wind power drops off a lot. Uh, in fact, as I went from the distance that I would normally put the fan on the ground to me on the bike, uh, you're going down quite considerably, as you can see right here between these two columns of air. Does that matter? I don't know. I don't really need 50 kilometers an hour wind directly in my face. I put my face right in front of it. The 46.4 kilometers. And yeah, the blow jet um, performance is very brief. And actually, before we go on to the next item, if you are a fan of the fan situation, and thus you're a fan of the page, go ahead and just give it a thumbs up. That tells YouTube that you're a fan, and you know what I mean. I'm, I'm out of fan puns at this point, but uh, it really do, I do appreciate it. Now, the big thing with both of these fans compared to all the junk behind me, that's really good junk, but just not as uh, smart junk, uh, is that those fans cannot connect it to heart rate sensors and power meters and things like that. The idea being that these fans can automatically increase their intensity as your heart rate goes up, as your speed in your trainer goes up, your power goes up, whatever the case may be. And it's really interesting to look through the compatibility list. So both of these fans connect to AMP plus heart rate sensors, but only the Elite fan connects to uh, Bluetooth heart rate sensors as well. For most straps, that's not really an issue because they're dual AMP plus and Bluetooth smart. But a lot of newer watches now, those from, for example, uh, Polar and Fitbit and others, only broadcast on Bluetooth Smart. Thus, if you wanted to use the heart rate sensor from your watch, you might be more limited there uh, with the Wahoo fan versus the Elite fan has you covered. Both fans can connect to smart trainers via AMP plus FEC, which every single trainer on the, the planet uh, supports, so you don't have to worry about that. Both fans can connect to AMP plus speed sensors in the case that you're doing rollers or something along those lines. Only the Elite fan, however, connect to AMP plus power meters. Uh, I, that's cool. That's, I'm not like dissing that in any way, shape, or form. That's, that's great they do that. Practically speaking, you're going to be on a trainer with this fan, and the trainer will almost certainly have uh, the AMP plus control. So that's really only notable if you wanted a power meter, didn't want to wear a heart rate strap, and were on some sort of like classic old trainer that you know didn't have that uh, AMP plus FEC. Now that said, one cool party trick Elite does have though is the ability to connect to the core body temperature sensor. Uh, so AMP plus body temperature sensor that'll basically broadcast your body temperature, and this can adjust the fan accordingly. And that is super cool. Practically speaking, again though, if you have that setup, you almost certainly have a heart rate strap on because the core sensor works more accurately with the heart rate strap connected to it, and thus in that case you could use heart rate instead. So I'm not knocking that, I'm just like giving you a practical bit of information here. Now inversely, the Wahoo Headwind Fan can be controlled by the Element Bike Computer Series as well as the Wahoo Rival uh, GPS watch, as well as a handful of third-party apps uh, that you've probably never heard of and most of you don't even know exist, but they do exist out there and it does allow you to control the Headwind from those apps. Unfortunately, neither allows any sort of Google Home or Apple Home or HomeKit integration for smart home type stuff, which is kind of a bummer because you can buy like smart home outlets for like 20 or 30 bucks and I wish there was support for that just as one other method of getting there. The last method that both of these devices support is app control from your phone. So both of them allow you to pair up sensors and configure those sensors. Obviously Elite has more options because they have more uh, pairing and configuration. Uh, but in terms of what you do for the ones that they have equal, it's essentially the same. You set essentially a floor and a ceiling for any of those values. And you say, uh, here is my minimum threshold for turning on the fan. And here is the maximum threshold that I want the fan to be at full speed for. So for example, if you were looking at your heart rate, you wouldn't want to set your max heart rate as the max fan speed because in that case, you've already like achieved that. You, wanna, you want the fan to do its job. And that's, I think, one of the challenges I have with all the sensor-connected stuff uh, is that if I'm going back down a hill, using speed, for example, or power isn't actually all that useful because that's the point where I want it to cool. I've just gone up this big virtual hill, I'm sweating my balls off, and now I want to go down the hill and have it keep on cooling me, not actually shut off. So, um, I, I appreciate like all the sensor connectivity of these two things, but that's also why practically speaking, I use a lot of the stuff behind me because I just want the fan always on all the time. Oh, and of course, in case that's not clear, both of these fans can be controlled by their respective apps from your phone. So when you do forget to turn your fan on, which is again, probably the really big selling point of both of these, uh, you're in the middle of that Zwift race like 90 seconds in and realize that your fan is off on the ground in front of you. This allows you to turn it on without basically sacrificing your entire race in that first 90 seconds. Now, one weird quirk of the passive standby on this, so it automatically turns on as soon as you start pedaling your trainer the very first time, is that it goes to sleep after five minutes. So you either have to press a button on here or on the app, just simply open the app up to connect to it. Sounds like that's something that'll fix in the next firmware version, so probably won't be an issue for very long. Okay, so with that said, which fan is the one I would recommend? Well. 
If you're spending 300 to 350 bucks on a smart trainer fan, then I think we can probably be honest with ourselves and say that that $50 isn't like the deciding point between these two. Uh, from a functional standpoint, there's no question the Elite has more functionality, more connectivity, more integration, more everything. Like this does all the things better. About the one thing I would say the Wahoo fan does better is I like the cord wrap around thing in the back. I like this little like cord wrap around thing because right now the Elite fan cord just flops all over the place. I, I don't know if I would sacrifice everything for that. Um, I don't put much stock in the carbon native filter situation there. I think that's cool, but it's not like the deciding factor for me. I think most people deciding factor is the fact that you can adjust it. Versus on the Wahoo side here, it just needs a few minor upgrades like in a V2 version with ideally some adjustability, for example, and maybe a software update to add the Bluetooth heart rate pairing support and perhaps some of the other connectivity options of the Elite fan. Thus, as it stands right now, I'd pretty much have to give it to the Elite fan in terms of just going out and buying the best possible trainer fan you can for, for the money. With that, if you found this video interesting or useful, definitely give it a like at the bottom there, or subscribe or something. There is a mind-boggling boatload of stuff coming over the next, like, 96 hours. Hold on to your YouTube pants because it is going to get crazy around here. If it's not crazy, it means I'm, I'm probably dead on the floor. But uh, if so, then I, I worked out and it, I succeeded. With that, have a good one.